<laughs> Coming in hot. Oh, I <laughs> like that. 464. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I need a little I need a little pep, a little pick me up from Did you? the Sous. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's I'm up in Cambria right now doing a little little uh getaway. Like I guess it's kinda like a staycation. Mm-hmm. Local, but not. And you know, the the being out in nature's got me all like zen and and just chill and like I don't know. Oh no, you got to liven up over here. I Sarah. know. What's we the have deal? a job to do? Hello, I know. Well, good thing that there's a lot of craziness out there in the world to keep things interesting. <laughs> like this one that I read. Did you hear what happened? This like just happened and wasn't even on my list of things to talk about. But okay. as I was cr- scrolling through Twitter this morning, I was like, oh god, it's it's not our favorite subject. I'm so but mad already. It's, fa- it's our favorite subject adjacent. Okay, so. is this about urine? Yes, it is. <laughs> How do you know? Do you know what well, I'm going to talk about? it's adjacent to poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's right next to the, the waste. It's part of the waste facility, yeah, waste management facility. Okay. poo and pee-pee. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, also, a side note: Do and do pe- do any humans that do not have either children or pets use the word poo poo or pee pee? <laughs> <laughs> no. And if they did, wouldn't you be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you, yeah, dude? Why are you what, saying why that? Why are you saying that? What are you a child? Uh, Don't you think it's weird? Also, that when you were in elementary school, presumably you also learned the charming limerick. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> milk, this. milk, lemonade around the corner. <laughs> fudge is made. <laughs> Why are we saying that? Susie, don't you dare because I swear to God, I had, because I've been, I haven't been driving around a lot. I haven't been listening to music as much, you know? And like, yeah. I can't listen to music in the house because like Ren's on meetings and you know, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I suppose I could with headphones, but whatever. I, for no joke, two days had one of those hand clapping songs Miss Susie and the oh, boyfriend. Yeah. The steamboat had a bell. Miss Susie went to heaven. Mm-hmm. The steamboat went to hello. Hello, what parade? Yes, right? And as yeah. I was singing it, I'm like, these lyrics are awful. Like, this <laughs> is horrible. No, like, I, how can you be in a good mood with this? Like, you know, the boys are in the bathroom. It's abusive. Up there. I'm like, oh my God. This is absolutely like reinforcing all the things we hate. Basically, Do you think the playground just- is terrible. Is it just the case that kids are always going to I think enjoy so. taboo things like that? Yeah. And there's nothing we can do to stop it? Or are we leading them down the wrong paths here? Oh, gosh. I mean, somebody's teaching them that song. <laughs> it was definitely it's like... the same dick who's teaching kids bunny ears <laughs> and the happy but you know birthday. What's that thing oh, they all... The cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha. God, Shit, I hate I the hate cha-cha-cha. It. Cha. Oh, and I don't like him anymore, and I don't like <laughs> any that. And I'm not e- – I don't even know if – well, maybe I am. I would say I'm a fan of See You Later, Alligator, and In a Wild Crocodile. I mean, that's – But that's uh, like where um, I draw the line. Acceptable. Oh, but God. Most Isn't it funny that we have like like – strong feelings Rage. about that <laughs> <laughs> yes but honestly any kind of prepackaged comedy i'm probably not going to enjoy because it's not yeah. funny you're right it's you know what i never thought about that it's prepackaged comedy and when you're a child that's mm-hmm. all you got that's all you got that's all i mean i remember that the the age that lincoln went through of the learning the elements of a joke that right, now he at least has mastered He's That's good. true. He's got There's it. always like a period of time when kids get into knock knock mm-hmm. jokes, but they don't understand the mechanics of them. Yes, this is it. This is correct. That's a tough two years. Yes, <laughs> I do offer knock knock jokes on my uh, cameo, and that has been a popular request. You do so, know that. Yes, I figured like what? How can I stand out? And I thought that was a way to do. Make you look them up, up, or are these all in your? Uh, File cabinet, mental file uh, cabinet. A, a little bit of both, somewhere in the file cabinet. And then I, I, I did, uh, you know, ask, ask a, or phone a friend. I asked Ren what, if he had any, and he did because he's also a camp counselor. Yeah. So we're good. Jesus we, Christ. Yeah. I know. Annoying is the worst. I can't okay. People are paying for this. Go ahead. Sorry. Right? Well, come on. Why not? You know, Brian's somebody's day with the funny knock knock. If you're a big fan of knock knock jokes, <laughs> It's for you. So it's not for everybody. Um, okay. What else 
is not for, well, pretty much anybody, is this story that I'm going to tell you about the pee. So this woman (laughs) is flying on Delta, and she wakes up to what she described was uh, a feeling of something warm on the side of her. Mm -hmm. And she opened her eyes to find another passenger peeing on her. (sighs) What would you even do? (sighs) I mean, what? I would make quite a scene. Would you even do? <laughs> I yeah. would probably assault them. Right. Kind of, yes. And then I was like, oh, my God. What? So, first of all, I should say she's on a flight to, I don't know why, it does matter for the story. She's on a flight, I believe, to or home from Vegas. <laughs> That also, I feel like, is an important element to the story. I didn't story. think you were going to say that. What do you I think thought I'm- you were going to say it was like a long haul, you know, where people get super <laughs> wasted and then, like, don't know what's happening. No, just where however long to Vegas, right. which is still people get super wasted. But oh I, because that's what my first instinct was. I was like, oh, yeah. this is somebody all wasty face and who thought, yeah. because remember how we talked about how I've had friends whose husbands have peed in, like, drawers and cabinets oh. and right and like those ones. yeah and and then other people reached out and were like oh yeah that totally happened yeah. so i'm like oh my god is this one of those a dude gets drunk and whips it out and and he's like unconscious or whatever right Blackout. and okay so it as it turns out he was on some sort of sleep medication i'm gonna oh guess ambient oh my god and he had a, like a bad reaction and couldn't, didn't remember and didn't even know. And he ended up getting tackled by another pa- like yeah, passenger absolutely. because of course, what are you going to do? Yeah. The, the getting peed on was, was I would say 30% of the, the awfulness. Okay. The other 70% was that she was forced to sit in this urinated soaked clothes <gasps> for the rest of the flight. I mean, that would... That I would, would it said for several money. hours until arrival. <gasps> Nobody could give her a shirt or something? Right. Well, people what? are not exactly fr- I remember my throw-up <laughs> incident. That was going to be my follow-up question is what's the weirdest thing a passenger's ever done to you? And then I was like <laughs> in my head I was like, "Oh, I know the answer to mine." <laughs> I've never had any kind of bizarro experience on a flight like that. And you've gone on a lot of long haul trips and a lot of plane rides. You've never seen anything. What's the weirdest thing you've seen on a plane? Like somebody do. Have you had any weird moments? No. Oh, no. I'm <sighs> due for one. Oh, no. Sus. That's what that means, Sarah. That does. That's like Qantas Airlines. Ghost to Christmas future. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. You are doing. Oh my gosh. Just make sure you sit next. If you sit next to anybody who looks like they're j- looking for or, or in need of a throw up bag, just <laughs> take a lot of trips to the bathroom or something. Why? Let me ask you something. Yes. Uh, maybe I'm out of the loop on this, but yeah. to me, it seems like really stupid to take sleeping medication before a flight. I know people do take like, oh, yeah. I feel tranquilizers like that's like what people do all the time. An Ambien, though? Oh, for sure. I think that's like numero uno on the planet. (laughs) That's like, I feel like Delta and and Ambien are like, are, are like in each, in each other's like pockets or whatever the expression business is. Partners. Like they're business partners. For okay. sure. Oh I my gosh. I just wouldn't do that. Would you? Yeah. Uh, Ambien on a plane? Yeah. Mm, no, because I don't even know. Oh, I'm trying to think if I've ever even taken Ambien on a plane. I don't even no. think I'd take an edible. I I feel like I've taken an Ambien once and had a weird reaction to it. I'm sure uh-huh. that's common. So why are these people just popping them before flights? Yeah. Well, I think people who do it on the regs do because like mm-hmm. my ex definitely did that on, on on long. Like that's what he got it for. And the doctor was like, yeah, here you go. You know, I have wow. to be on like international flights or like out. red eye and shit like that. Or maybe like when you land to like knock you out. It's not a good. I don't. I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, but you get it. I, yeah. You know, I, oh do what you do God. if you have a prescription. Like you know, live your own life. But was this guy super sorry? Well, this guy I, it doesn't say. They've withheld his name. <laughs> but what it does say is he's a well-known pastor from oh my God. North Carolina. No. Yes. So now we have a lot of. There's going to be a lot of explaining to do. Of I feel like that the news of of. 
the well-known pastor who peed on the woman is going to get around quick. Wow. You can, you can only hold that, that name off for so long. But I honestly think this happened, like, today. Ugh. Yeah. So there hasn't even been, like, a follow-up. It's from, like, the New York Post. That's how. Like, <laughs> you can't, I mean, you wouldn't sue, like, the airline, though, would you? You'd sue that guy. I, I do feel like if she, if they stopped her in some way, oh God, the hard thing is, is like when you buy a plane ticket, I feel like they, there's like so many things that are protecting them from this, that it probably says like, (laughs) you are, you have to like fucking deal with it or what else, you know, (laughs) not our, not my problem somewhere (laughs) in the, in the contract that you like, when you buy a ticket, you agree to the terms and conditions, I suppose, because like, I don't know if you. I feel like they should have changed her seat. They should yeah. have, like, give, given her, something. I don't know. You, isn't there some spare something in one of those blankets, at least? I would have rather had yeah. a questionable, rough, <laughs> questionable fleece blanket, fleece question mark, bl- polyester yeah. blanket yeah. That that is, like, four feet by two feet and uh, that I can poke a hole through with my finger. Right. It's so funny. Uh, then Van you're in soaked clothing. Pants. Thank you very much. And as somebody who's had vomit soaked clothing and yeah. been forced to stay on a plane, I can would say that with great have, confidence. Would you oh. rather have vomit or pee? This is an excellent question. Oh my God. <laughs> this is like I don't <laughs> Sophie's know. choice. Sophie's choice. I was gonna say that. I think I would rather have pee. Really? Because it's 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 more sanitary. It's somehow. more sanitary, and it's like one thing. This is what I say with, with vomit. <laughs> you know, my 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 hang up with vomit. My my what? It's yeah, the she chunks. doesn't like the chunks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, four hundred and sixty something episodes, and man, would we be That's good at that newlywed game? The she yeah. knows that my least favorite part about vomit are the chunks. But really, isn't that everyone's? No, for me, it's the smell. It's the smell. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. If they were chunks with no oh no my odor. god it's just gross talking that might be one of my least favorite words i think i'm gonna go with that there's no you can add a y on it and we're good because yeah, now right. we're describing chocolate chips and peanut butter yeah i'm for it you mm-hmm. lose that chunks. and add the s pluralize no 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 i can't several I can't. chunks oh <sighs> that is actually foul so yeah, that is my uh, poo adjacent story, but I can't believe that you've never had a bad airplane experience. Me neither. Yeah. Did uh, you see? May- oh my god. I guess I thought they weren't that common. That it was. This I'm, is unusual. I'm surprised. I don't understand why it's not more common. I this blows my mind every single time I'm on a plane. I'm like, why doesn't someone freak out every time? Yeah, that I get. I can't, and maybe it's just that we're looking around and nobody else is freaking out, so we're not freaking yeah. out. That's right. like my pure only pressure. conclusion. We're peer pressuring ourselves into being calm, which thank goodness. <laughs> right. I forget. We were watching um, on, I think it was Discovery. It's called Brain Games. Oh, where yeah. They, I love you know, those. It's great for watching with Lincoln because they do science, but it's fun. And they were doing that thing where you... Uh, have money for people and if both of them agree to split it then they get to split it you know that kind of theoretical problem yes but they were describing how humans are hardwired to cooperate Mm. and i think that obviously is helpful on airplanes yes humans are hardwired that is such a good point humans are hardwired to because it helps survival yes if you have a tribe or a group that is has the same goal (laughs) Yes. Oh, that is so cool because that is right in line with one of the other things that I was really excited to share with you today. And that is an article that I found on 17 psychological tricks to make people like you. Ooh, right. I would love to hear these. And some of them, yes, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I like, get so excited. It's, well, it's handy information. Yes. And also tells us a lot about how humans think and feel so much other. yeah and I'm so much it. of it is i i mean i i was thinking i'm going in here thinking like oh i know what this is going to be this is like the all the the usual like mm-hmm. you <laughs> yeah know, basically everything we talk about on the show there were a lot of things that absolutely blew my mind and that i 
fail. Oh, and, okay. Uh, that make me go, how do I even have friends? Nobody likes you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I'm like, because I absolutely do the opposite of that. And it is like, huh, exhausting. So, okay. The number one, first of all, let me see. All of this came from like science backed strategies that people were looking at, like, you know, those cumulative, what are they called? Um, I'm ter- My research professor would just like slap my hand for this, where it's like they look at all of the studies, c- comp- mm, whatever. The sciencey people out there know what I'm talking about, and they just like look at all the studies, and it's not like a new one; it's just like a review of old ones. Oh, literature like review. Yes, thank you. Yeah, oh, there we go. I'm like, I know somebody smart out there. We're Susie, a team. We'll get it. There we go. Okay, so number one strategy: mirroring. This one is like the most obvious, right? Like that right. you sit next to somebody, the more you copy them, the more they will like you. And I think back to how you and I will pick up people, well, you know, depending on who we're with, more than yeah. uh, the, the, their accent or their affect. Yeah. So there was a research study that was done. The one that they looked at was 78 men and women who are working on a task with a partner. And they... Uh, The partners engaged in like different levels of mimicry and the researchers secretly videotaped the interactions. And then at the end, they asked the participants, like, how much did you like the partners? And all, every single, like across the board, participants were way more likely to say that they liked their partner when the partner had mimicked their behavior. So we, that Hmm. is like one that we absolutely know. They call it the chameleon effect. And it's like an unconscious Hmm. mimicking of that behavior. And number two, another obvious one, spend more time around them. The mere exposure effect is the one me, that works. Have yes. you ever heard that thing where, let's say you're on a date yeah. and your date takes a sip of his drink and then you take one. It's supposed yes. to be a sign that you're enjoying it. Yes. Do that's you think totally that it. that's true? Oh, okay. Remember, we ta- I'm so glad that we, we th- talked about, that you asked me this. Because I remember we talked about this study... A while back, on how we think that that's it, and and yeah, but that doesn't indicate romantic love, right? It just indicates wanting the person to like you, right? And that's you what don't, I'm thinking. Yes, abs. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, this is exactly what we got. Yes, that is so cool because when we were talking about that other study, it said the only thing that is a sure tell, like fire way to predict how well a couple will do is the, their heart rates being in sync and their breathing being oh in sync. God, Remember that? Cute. No, but that's adorable. Oh, I, yes, and that was exactly what you said before. You're like, oh my God, that's adorable. Yes, but their heart <laughs> rate their heart rate, and their, their breathing patterns will start to sync up. And sometimes huh. I notice when I wake up in the morning and Ren and I both, and maybe you notice this, try like being aware of this with Lincoln and Adam. Like hmm. when you wake up in the morning, See if you like relax if you guys br- are breathing at the same I rate. Will. I'm gonna because pay I swear it, it's every single time. And then when I like it's I'm so half cute. awake and then I relax again, I'm like, oh, we're breathing at the exact same rate. And then Bo, we'll t- we'll both take a big deep breath, <laughs> and then Bo from across the room will be like, <sighs> and well, I'm like, oh, it is yeah. triangular love between you three. It definitely is. Yeah. And that, yes. And that like you know there are all those. Uh, I don't even know what this the if what this research says on this but there are the theories that that helps babies that hearing the breathing and helps them like regulate their breathing oh my god it's too yeah. much cuteness it's, right yes it is. so mm-hmm. oh that's adorable so yes so that predicts like the love but if we're just lo- looking at how do i get people to like yeah, me? yeah how yeah. do i get to like and i think these are good ones if we're you know how like we we have talked before and like I talked to a lot of people about how do you make friends as an adult and I think this year especially problem we've I mean I think I I can speak for myself and a lot of other people out there that friend groups have definitely changed Mm -hmm. and think people have like okay well can't uh, I maybe need to make some more friends who different friends who maybe have more similar ideas than me about certain things and that's okay but how the heck do I do that and so <laughs> this one, it, this has, was in my mind of like, if I, you know, kids are so good at making friends because they just like go up to other kids and they're like, hi, right. my name's whatever. What, what's your favorite color? Mine is right. blue. They just dive right in. They dive right in. Mm-hmm. And they're like, 
you know, hey, you wore that shirt the other day. I have that shirt. Whatever it is. They're, they, like, yeah. just... They don't have that, like, layer of self-judgment. And so a lot of this, I feel like as I was reading this, a lot of this was, like, just be, like, a little kid almost. Like, you know, kind of connect with that, and it'll help. So number two, the mere exposure effect. Spend more time around them. That's, like, the real obvious one. Do they list at all how you could help, like, yourself better by using better help? Oh my gosh. Well, I help myself better using better help and yes. I know how much it works. I love it. I have a great therapist who works with me on getting my daily schedule ironed out and she keeps me accountable and we have really, it's like whatever your needs are and whatever level, mm-hmm. it, there is somebody there to help you. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. On your time and your schedule and we just text. BetterHelp is such a convenient tool if you need someone to talk to um, who is a you know, professional counselor. And like Sarah said, you can use, you can use it at any time. So whenever you're having these feelings, you can just log in and write to your, uh, counselor and share if you're depressed or anxious or having, uh, relationship issues or sleeping issues, like so many of us are. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, available worldwide. It's so much, it's so affordable, which is a great option for people. They have financial aid available as well. It's just a really nice service for, people who are are wanting to, you know, get whether like accountability or get advice or just someone to talk to for heaven's sake. Um, I want you to start living a happier life as a listener. You'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash brain candy. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. Oh, please. I can't even stress enough how much people should just... Just Try do it. it out. Just do yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, you know, my mom and I were joking. It's like you can't tickle yourself. Yeah. You can't do do your own therapy. You can't right. talk to be your own like doctor. You mm-hmm. you gotta have a little and my aunt always says that she says my mind is a dangerous neighborhood and I don't like walking through it alone. Oh my God. <laughs> That's everybody's mind too. Right? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's dark in there. I better get some fr- I get better get some better help. Exactly. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yes. yes. Okay. So, and I'm sure the therapist would agree with number 3 that complimenting <laughs> other people is the way to make people like you, but not complimenting other people like the people that you're hanging out with. It's like so you and I are hanging out and we're talking about um, I don't know, a friend of ours. I'm like, oh yeah, she is so honest and she's so nice and whatever. There was a new study that's out that found that people will start associating traits uh, with whoever's talking about those specific traits. So oh, whatever you say about other people influences how people see you. So if that's you just terrible, right? It's basically saying that if you're gossipy and you say it says. If you describe someone else as genuine and kind, people will also associate you with those qualities. The reverse oh is also true. If you are constantly trashing people behind their backs, your friend will start to associate the negative qualities with you as well. We can't That's even help it. Terrible even news. if they're not true. So if that ain't ever an argument for why we shouldn't like talk about people shit behind their talk. back. You can't yeah, shit talk. I mean, people must think I'm the worst then because that's my go-to. I'm always like, he's the worst. (laughs) But then you're also – but I'm going to tell you why. Uh, uh, Oh, my God. I I almost want to skip down to number six. I have to. I'm going to skip down to number six and then we'll go back. (laughs) To skip it, everybody. I am. This is the one that I I lose at. (laughs) There is something called the the gain-loss theory. And number six, which sounds like counterintuitive, don't be complimentary all the time. Okay. Yes. So there was a study that was done by the University of Minnesota where they showed how this would work like in practice. So they took the, they took 80 uh, female college students and they put them into pairs and they had them work on tasks. And while they were working on the tasks, they had them overhear conversations with the where like the experimenters told the partners like what to say. So in one scenario, the comments were all positive. So they were working together and, and this one of the partners was overhearing another partner talk about her and all the comments were positive. In the, another scenario, all the comments were negative. 
And in okay. the third scenario, the comments went from positive to negative. And then in a fourth scenario, the comments went from negative to positive. Right. So as it turns out, the students liked their partners best when they went from positive to negative. Meaning wow. that, right, that we want, we don't, we want to feel like we've, we've won people over, but we, if they start complimenting us too much, we don't believe it's sincere. Wow. It has like it, the opposite effect. Huh. It Isn't just that seems this false flattery kind of thing. Yes. And this is my, this is what I do. I am like, yeah. because I on it, like, I feel like one of my, one, I would say one of the things that's my best trait, and this is how it always works with, with traits. There's a good side, a, you know, flip side to every coin. One of like my favorite things about myself is that I'm a good cheerleader for other people. You are. And if anybody can see the good in people, like the good in somebody, oh my God, I can find it. And I love telling people about it. And if I feel like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite shirt. I love that shirt on you. I love your haircut. Your eyebrows look so good today. I want to tell people. But Mm -hmm. now I think that may have backfired because this is what I got on the challenge and in the real world house where they said that I was fake. Right. That is a problem where you're, it's dichotomous. They, they either think you're a bitch or phony. Right. That's specifically for a women, women problem. Uh, <laughs> right. Isn't that annoying? But I, I mean, anyone that's listened to any of my interviews knows that's one of the things I do oh, is just yes. shower them with praise, yes. but I'm not doing it to just blow smoke. I genuinely want to celebrate their um, excellence and success but maybe i need to pepper in like a like they do on guys <laughs> grocery games when a they credit, eat the food. A critique yeah yeah they'll be like this dish is amazing it's perfect blah 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 the only thing i would ding you on is you know it could yes. use a note of acid or something like yes. that so yes. maybe they're applying this logic that you're so, saying yes. works so well or like the great british bake-off my new favorite show and self-care <laughs> Technique 101. P.S. What the heck day do the new episodes come out? Friday. Oh, God. I'm like, I need the next week. Did you I, see Bread Week? Of course I saw Bread Week. What did you think about the unicorn re- uh, bagels? I love those. Oh, They're I love them too. They did an mm-hmm. excellent job. And I was so bummed when What's His Name went away. Uh, it's uh, always sad. What, you, uh, the, the cute guy who, who said he was more style than substance. And then yeah, Noel Rowan? said... Yes, Rowan. Yeah. And then Noel goes, oh, more style than substance? That's on my CV. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, is that not the sweetest thing? Like, that show takes care of everybody. I, you are right. I can't even listen to the opening music without tearing yeah. up. It, like, <laughs> it, I don't know what it's it does. It's emotional. I it agree. is emotional. And, like, I cry for when their bread doesn't rise. <laughs> What is wrong with me? They didn't proof it long enough. Right. I'm like, you didn't proof. You put too much water in the batter. It's too tough. (laughs) Like, I'm just like a mess. I know. It's Pavlovian, the song, because you think I'm about to be filled. Like my bucket is about to get filled up. So you get so excited and emotional. Oh, God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well. I'm glad you've embraced it. I really have. Like full embrace. And then I found (laughs) out that one of my favorite new follows on Instagram uh, (laughs) is this account called Very Gay Painters. And (laughs) they're they're these two guys, the gay guys in LA, who are painters. And they have a painting team that they go around and they do these amazing, really cool, funky, like 70s vibe, um, like murals and like detail like painting where they'll they'll almost like the paint a bed frame and it looks so cool and so awesome and their uh uh their stories are so hilarious and oh gosh, you have great tips for insta follows oh my god because i i do ones that keep that that bring me joy so like yeah. my thing is like i i'm only following people that when i look at their page i feel warm and happy and good about myself not mm-hmm. like oh well, I'm not enough, or I should yeah, be doing something else. That's why I'm else. amazed that you follow so many challenge people, especially that you don't have them muted. Well, some of them I do. Some of them I've recently had to do that because I'm like, yeah, mm, I it's can't. too much, man. Yeah, but some of them I love, like Jenny. I love mm-hmm. her. She is the mm-hmm. best follow, and I love when she puts up her pictures of like her as a regular person. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's what. Yeah, I look like that sometimes. Hell yeah. yeah. So that always makes me feel good. 
What was I going? Where was I going with this very gay painter very gay story? Pa- well, Brit Bake Off and how, you know, the song makes us happy and fills yeah. our bucket. Yeah. All that stuff. All that but, good stuff. But I you was know, just saying just happy that gay painters. the judging on these shows often has that same algorithm or equation of like, Positive, 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 and then a little yes. negative, but yes. everybody's happy. Yes, and maybe we need that to keep it kind of like balanced and so we're not like, hmm, that's phony baloney. Yes. Yes. And okay, that's good advice. Yeah, and that makes sense because number four on the list, another obvious one, be in a great mood. Emotional contagion <laughs> is a total thing. That one I was like, okay, be in a great mood. Well, I, I, don't we all wish? Wouldn't that be nice? So, you know, try. Right. I guess that's maybe uh, try to focus on the positive and try to look at the happy things. And if you're going to be around a bunch of people that are new, thoughts that are, oh my gosh, will they like me? I'm so nervous, can lead to us looking like we're in a bad mood. But thoughts like, hey, I can't wait to to see who I'm going to meet here and I'm open to new experiences and maybe I'm a little bit nervous, but that's okay can maybe mm-hmm. put you in a little bit better mood or just like listen to some Cardi B before you like hang out with people because that always puts me in a good mood. You know? Okay, that's good that's advice. Like, that wasn't on the list, but I threw that in. I was like <laughs> the four Cardi B. B. Specifically? This, yes, specifically. Yeah. Uh, number five, make friends with their friends. That one felt a little stalkery to me. Oh. Like, if somebody, if I, if I don't. I don't like you, that advice. Yeah, I didn't. That was kind of weird to me too. But it, they, this was based on this advice or this this uh, number on the list was based on this social network theory called triadic closure, which means that two people are likely to be closer when they have a common friend. Two people. Are- yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So they found that people were more likely to accept friend requests, and they just look at Facebook for this, which I felt like, okay, well, that's not. It would be weird if you met somebody brand new in real life and then they went out and f- like friended everyone on your in your social group, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making yeah, sure that I I don't uh, like that for me or them. Right. I was that's yeah. when I kind of pushed back too where I was like cuz see I told you some of these on here I was like mm-hmm. But I mean maybe it would successfully make someone like me but right. Like at what cost? Uh, well, yeah, right, exactly. Right. Mm-mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Another obvious one, be warm and competent. That the stereotype content model, which is a theory that says people judge people based on their warmth and competence, always holds up. So if you portray yourself, this is another one, I, when I read what that meant of uh, people who, who have warmth and competence, I was like, well, fuck, I failed at this one too. I should say I could be better. Um if you portray yourself as, and by warm, this is what they mean, non-competitive and friendly. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. Mm-mm. I know. Non-com- that's very bad well, for me. What do they mean, though? Maybe they mean competitive with the other person in life. Yeah, maybe that. That's, uh-huh, like the one-upper. Because you are you just said, you know, you cheerlead for other people, so that yeah. is... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I definitely, like, in a competitive, like... Yeah, you want to kick their ass, though, privately. Yeah, privately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm friendly, but I do want to kick their ass. But I'll be nice about it, so maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Ugh. Yes. So apparently if you are non-competitive and friendly, then people will feel like they can trust you. And if you seem com- competent, which means you, like, in, in their scale was high economic or educational status, then they're more inclined to respect you. Mm-hmm. So basically, if you can be like non-competitive, friendly, and then flex like you are smart, people yeah. like you. I didn't like that one that much either. <sighs> Let me think about that. Non-competitive, friendly, but super smart. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, this is right in line with number eight, which is reveal your flaws from time to time. I love I that. Mean- That's our specialty. (laughs) Our specialty. We may not be good at, I may not be good at at being non-competitive, but I am very good at revealing my flaws. Yeah. And like every week, the listeners that message me to say like something I've said that's offensive, remind me of my flaws as well. Oh, isn't that fun? They're at top of mind. (laughs) Yes. They are. They, and I've just been like, oh, I, I honestly don't think I can post anything without a comment. With that really? somebody had. Oh, it's but yeah. There's I guess very I never few. see those on yours. Oh, because I just delete them. Because I ain't yeah, got time good. for that shit. 
No. Ren told me this. He was like, look, that's yeah. like your, your, like, this is your, like, yes. wall in your house. That's why I'm happy to block and stuff like that. Cause it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I yeah. don't care. That's fun to do when you get a little, like, block, block happy. Yeah. You're like, oh, block. Well, ooh, they're all muse. deserving. Ooh, bye. Oh, yep, out of here. Yes, mm-hmm. it's real fun. And then I just love to save and share ones of people that I love because that makes me feel like I'm supporting them and, and you know, of those things like yeah. my very gay painters. And other one I love, Plant <laughs> Queen. Oh, my God. Plant Queen is the freaking best. And that's Plant Queen with a K, K-W-E-E-N. You're welcome. <laughs> you will absolutely love this. Thanks love later. This. Yes, you can thank me later. Um. Okay. Number nine on the list, emphasize your shared values. Similarity, attraction, effect is in place there. And that is another obvious one. It's like, if you want to be friendly with somebody, try doing something that's like an activity that you you enjoy. And you'll probably meet somebody else who enjoys that activity too. And you'll be more likely to make friends with them because of this shared interest. I One of the things that I've told clients who... I don't know if anybody's even taking me up on this advice, but I encourage anybody who's naturey to join the Sierra Club. And it feels like something that's for old people, but I really think there's like a new um, uh, youthful movement in the Sierra Club. Okay. I don't know how they're responding to COVID, but do you know what the Sierra well, Club is? Yeah. Yeah. But why I do you it. recommend joining it? What is it that because, you enjoy about it? Because it's such a great, there's, I think sometimes people who it, it can be hard to find people to go on hikes with or new those kind of things oh, to okay, do yeah that like-minded it's a great people. place yeah like-minded mm-hmm. people and and having shared uh like emphasizing shared values or like similar things that you know you well, i guess shared values is a little different like similar politics and that kind of stuff but yeah. similar things that you like to do i think those are the best places to meet friends yeah, I would agree with that. Do they yeah. facilitate that through networking or something? Or Oh, at Sierra Because you know how most organizations, it's like you're a member, but you don't ever meet the other members or anything. I think because it's outdoors and because you go on hikes together. Oh, okay. it, like I've, I've, I have a few friends who do that and they love it. That's nice. Yeah. Well, and they're I- guaranteed to not be assholes. Gar- oh my gosh, that is so true. Guaranteed not right. to be assholes. And the kind of people who lead the hikes are the... Oh, I mean, I love these kind of people who are like super nerdy fact people who want to share every single little... They're like tour guides of the hike. And I love that. <laughs> and they're always like naturalists. And That's it's the least cool. fa- my least favorite part. Okay. So maybe your group of who you would hang out with would be a little bit different. You know why? Let's go full circle. Because yeah. tour guides are the number one peddler of prepackaged jokes oh my god you are so correct and as somebody who has a mother who was a tour guide i know this to be a fact <laughs> they use the same material every oh, yes. time oh yes oh and sometimes yes sometimes they try to pretend like they just think of it right then and i don't mm-hmm. like that we're on oh, TV yeah. tour guides my mom is was so good at that in fact like i think i could give her tour through uh florence now <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm sure and oh my gosh! I guess she it would, doesn't bother you. Nah, not so much. She because I I I see that people love doing that. They come alive when they could like be in that role. Like oh my gosh! Like remember when I went to Zion and oh what the hell was his name? The the oh bus driver. Oh bus. He had a name that rhymed with bus or like driver. Damn. It was really good. But he was like the, the bus driver, shuttle driver. Yes, I'm, I remember. Yes. And mm-hmm. that guy was full of facts and I will never forget full them to this day. Facts. I love it. I loved it so much. So I'm like, I'm, I remember all of that. When I was in the Czech Republic for a challenge, we went on a, uh, they put us on a bus that was like a tour through town. Everybody else hated it. I was like in the front row, like, tell me more. <laughs> and I know that uh, the Czech people invented, uh, uh, um, what the hell are they called? contact lenses and yeah. they also invented the word robot i mean yeah you can and that was things. like 10 years ago that i i did that and i remember those facts completely yeah, useless. I, re- <laughs> I remember some from like my eighth grade trip to toronto oh like I that's a fun t- place to go john candy and wayne gretzky co-owned one of their sports teams <laughs> I, that. I don't even like sports or really wayne gretzky 
But how do you feel about John Candy? He R.I.P. I mean, who yeah. doesn't love John? Right. Aw. <laughs> Aw. But so, yeah, it can be useful. I'm just not really into the group experiences. I yeah. should not join the Sierra yeah. Club, basically. Yeah, you shouldn't. Um, I'm not... I I thought I wasn't into number 10, but now after being quarantined, well, sort of quarantined, like just away from people for so long yeah. and yeah. living in LA, you freaking have to be. Um, number 10, casually touching them. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Me too. Yeah, At I first I was like, mm, I don't like touching. But now after not being touched, like I miss hugs so much. Yeah. I didn't even think I liked hugs. But now I see somebody and I'm like, oh my God, I want to hug them. And when I see a dog, I'm like, I have to hug that dog. Yeah, well, that, you're just human. That's normal. Right. That is normal. Yeah, but I agree. And I am very touchy. I think that's part of why people think I'm flirtatious, right. besides from the actual flirting. But, mm-hmm. um, but I feel oh like my God, touching stop. People. I almost missed that joke and that was freaking <laughs> hilarious. Besides from the actual flirting. Also, I was thinking about this the other day. Didn't... <laughs> What? How old were you when you got Biggest Flirt? I was 17. Oh, that's kind of gross. Oh, <laughs> gross. I mean, it's not that bad, but like, like it's, I just don't like that they even had that as like a Oh, interesting. A thing. I never thought about it that yeah, way. Yeah, and just because like, I think I saw it, I saw somebody, like an old friend of mine posted some throwback picture where like, she had won or one of her friends had won like biggest flirt in like junior high or high, something like that. And she was like, "Mm, looking back, that was kind of an inappropriate one. And I never really thought about that. And then I was like, "Mm, yeah, like the fact there is biggest flirt would Mm. maybe make some people feel because biggest flirt, we're not giving that to a guy. Yeah. Well, we did have one, one for each, but, Oh, well, there you go. But I think it usually is, you know, a wink and a nod meaning that you're kind of slutty or whatever yes it is of course i remember because the girl who won it from our school was nicknamed pop rocks and i'll give you two guesses why she was got that nickname and you only need one i don't even know what that means though oh think of like why pop rocks yeah pop rocks like the candy that makes that exploding noise in your mouth uh, gotcha say no yeah. more yeah, there I you didn't go. know that was a code though for it. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah, but yeah, she's like, you know. But I, I really do think it should more be a synonymous with just extroversion rather than yeah. Well, we had sexual most, promiscuity. I think we had most outgoing in my high oh school. Oh God, it's like a separate one. That's better. That's much yeah, better. Most outgoing, and I, I think I was in the running for that one, and I was really I'm sure. mad. I lost it to a girl named Tamara. Shout out to Tamara. We're friends online, and she's an amazing cartoonist. And she uh, is uh, also hurts, amazing. Though. It it doesn't though because she deserved <laughs> that, and she like she probably followed all of the things on this list. And here I was like over complimenting people and being like uh, you know competitive. So oh yeah, maybe that's you know? why you didn't get the the award. Because yes. that was your main problem. Okay. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, number eleven. Also, we, you know, we're gonna give this one the eye roll, but of course, it makes sense. Smile. Oh, for fuck's sake! I know. And so this one, this one, when even reading this article, I was like, why did you have to use that study? Because the yeah. study that they used looked at a hundred under undergraduate women looking at photos of other women. And smiling or non-smiling or, you know, not open positions. And the results showed that women in the... See, that's annoying. Yes. Right? I know. Yep. Thank you. That's infuriating. Right? This Uh, is that stupid uh, likability test thing. Yes. And it's women being judgy and don't we hate that? Yes, we do. It's the worst. It is. I'm mad. I say that's not a way to make friends. I mean, smile at them, yes, but, you know. Yeah, shitty friends. (laughs) <laughs> fake ones Gosh. <laughs> like a bunch of dudes yeah that are oh. Like, oh i like your smile yeah. fuck you has somebody have somebody said that to you in a while no or, yeah me neither i actually Mm-mm. i'm like fucking try i i think i've aged out of it they don't i think i think you know what i think i have too i think i might be <laughs> i'm at i'm at like almost full full ma'am like in oh every God, scenario full ma'am like every scenario, I'm ma- ma'am, not miss anymore. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They almost, don't care if we smile. Over. They want us yeah. to be dead. 
Right. We're They're useless. like, you're invisible. Yeah, we, you're no good to us anymore. You're past your prime. You're over 18. We no longer need you. Which ah! is nice. I don't it's have awesome. to smile Awful. for anyone. Yeah, that is kind of nice. Yeah. Come into your own, really, and just be like resting whatever face. I yeah. hate that resting bitch face thing. I have resting concern face. Resting I'm solving a problem in my mind face. I like that tweet where they were like, why did they call it that? My face is not a, it's not resting, bitch. I'm working hard. Right. <laughs> yes. I'm actually Something working like really hard at that. Yeah. Oh, there's no rest funny. about it. Yes. Yes. Hmm. All right. So some of the other ones I have on this list, a few more. See the other person how they want to be seen. So that makes sense. People want to be perceived in a way that aligns with their own beliefs about themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a self-verification theory, right? Well, we wanna- that, I think that's hard to come by, though. I feel like you do that for me. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. I feel do you like feel you're... like, though, most people don't do that for you? Mm, no, I think they I think they do. I feel like mm-hmm. the, the... Because I that's what I get. I feel like how I've been portrayed on television and what people, you know, write to me and talk to me about on there is definitely how I'd want to be portrayed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, number 13, tell them a secret. We love yeah. this one. Self-disclosure. Hello. That is so good. And self-disclosure is like the best way to create a bond and create intimacy. So if I tell them a secret, they're more inclined to like me? Yes. About myself, the secret has to be? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I can't tell if someone else's secret. <laughs> You uh, th- no, that would be. I uh, maybe that would fall into the cosmic category. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, it says that when okay. people in- engage and they were they were more open with more personal questions. So rather than they would oh, ask well, them, people in- must love us, right? That's what I'm saying. Like I think you are more like you get deeper. I mean, hello. I you're- guess I don't think of them as secrets. <laughs> I think that's it. Is we don't we nothing's a secret when we freaking talk about it, and we have four hundred and however many episodes of us talking about. I have it, very right? few secrets. At Bare, this me point. too. Uh, zero. You know. <laughs> oh my god. And I tried. Oh, what I do? I tried to do something to Ren the other day where I like tricked him with some like tried to do like a oh I forgot to get that at the store thing. I couldn't even. I was so bad at that. Uh, like I can't even do one of those. Like it's the thought I, that counts. I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't get it. And like with the big old smile, I'm just like, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, I did. I was trying to trick you. Oh it's my like, god, oh, you're the worst. Work. I'm the worst at that. So, um, okay. Last few things on this list. Uh, expect good things from people. According to the Pygmalion effect, people treat others in ways that are consistent with their expectations of them. So if you mm-hmm. expect people to be nice to you, people will be nicer to you. Yeah. That's, I, like I don't that. know though. That's what my therapist always says like, cause I'll try to be, I try to follow that logic that I just treat people how I would want to be treated. Right. But sometimes you get that effect where if you're a giver, yeah. then you attract takers. Oh, for sure. That thing. Yeah. And so I feel like that, what you just said doesn't work because mm-hmm. of that dynamic. Mm. It's more like. If you think somebody's a jerk, you start behaving towards them in a way that elicits jerky behaviors. Oh, really? Yeah. But if I think someone's nice, then they'll be nice. Yes. Oh, okay. However, like however you treat them kind of causes them to fall into that be that those behaviors. It kind of is like that thing where they say if you are a teacher of a classroom, if you tell your students, you guys are so tidy and organized yes. and they will be more motivated to oh be that. Oh my god, I totally forgot about that trick. Yes, I used yeah. to love to do that with campers. Right. <laughs> you guys are the best cabin and you guys are the cleanest one I have ever had. I yeah. can't even and then I've they want to live seen. up to that. Yes, it's the greatest. Yeah. That works so well with teenage girls. Oh, they're easily to, easy to manipulate. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, number 15, another one that I'm like, oh, come on, of course. Act like you like them. Yeah, of course. I feel like we should act all the time like we like people. Act like we like them. In yeah. order for them to like us. Yeah, it's called yeah. The, res- the reciprocity of liking. When yeah. we think someone likes us, we tend to like them as well. Yeah. Number I like six, that. yeah, right. Simple. Number sixteen, display a sense of humor. Nailing mm-hmm. it. Check. Got it. Check. <laughs> I mean, how do they feel about knock knock jokes? 
<laughs> prepackaged up your yeah. uh, alley. There, there you go. Prepackaged jokes. <laughs> and number 17, maybe your best quality of all, let wow. them talk about themselves. I, <laughs> that I can handle. Oh yes. my gosh, you're so good at that. Yes. So Harvard researchers recently discovered, and also recently discovered, I feel like we've known this one for like one million years, that yeah. talking about yourself may be inherently rewarding the same way that food, money, and sex are. Wow. I yeah. mean, I certainly know that people really love talking about themselves. Yes, they do. It's everybody. My mom would always say that. She was like, if you ever get nervous about what to say on a first date, just ask them about themselves. Everybody's favorite topic is themselves. Yeah. It's, it's like my whole philosophy of life. Mm-hmm. And you learn so much. It's fun. Yep. It's not a sacrifice. Yep. yep. This is the crazy part about that study, that when they were looking at the brain regions that were associated with like motivation and reward in people sharing uh, information about them publicly, they lit up whether the person was talking to someone or even if no one was listening. Oh, my God. So that means that if you want to feel better about yourself, you can, like, write down. And I tell my clients to do this all the time. Oh. And, like, you, how, why you have to actually write it down and then read it out loud is if you write down, like, you talk about yourself and you write a story about yourself, like, you know, um, you know, Sarah is a podcast host who loves making people laugh and always feels good brightening up somebody's day, blah, 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 blah. You can read that out loud and you will – get the same stimulation in the motivation and reward part of your brain, that same part of your brain that uh, rewards like food, money, and sex live. Mm -hmm. And it will even work if nobody's listening. Wow. So kind of journaling-ish? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That would, I think that would fall, that would make, Mm -hmm. that would like check that box. That is weird, man. Yeah. I don't know if we should lean into that. <laughs> right. Well, that they were they were like things to like think about, things to, yeah. you know, like mull over and, you know, I feel like if you are looking, if you're somebody who's I don't know, I sometimes I feel like things like that help with social anxiety. It's like, okay, I've got a game plan. True. I know what I do. All I have yeah. to do is go there and I'm going to work on Letting them talk and like pick three. I'm going to work on letting somebody talk about themselves. I'm going to work on uh, maybe telling them a secret and I'm going to work on seeing the other person how they want to be seen based on what they tell me about their life. Then I bet you could make, I mean, don't try to like, oh my God, I'm not going to use all of them. But I think that's a handy little list if you're you're looking for, you know, need some help to kind of like tackle some social anxiety stuff. And I think for a lot of us who have been cooped up for so long and away from people and in our own minds especially people who live alone like it can take a little bit of practice to get yeah. back out there in the real world yes you do get rusty for sure you kind of do mm-hmm. i've also noticed this with my dance moves <laughs> i don't buy that uh they uh you don't buy it and you don't up. think they were ever good and they no. just have stayed the same or no, because I, 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 I was like oh yeah no 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 these hips need a little lubrication they need Dang. like the v i need to yeah uh-huh uh-huh they wow. they they, they how did they you forgotten. find this out because we were playing some fun motown music in the kitchen one night and i was like Got ugly oh my gosh these hips are, are lying like <laughs> That's awful. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is not good. Well, hey, you just yeah. got to practice. Practice That's makes all. perfect, just like everything. So, oh well, my God. Let's wind well, it down, Sarah. Let's wind it down. Oh, we learned a lot. We uh, learned that if you, you should always bring a change of clothes on the airplane. Because <laughs> you yeah, never that's know we when you might get pissed on. Pack a change of clothes yes. in your carry on. I in did case always someone pees on yes. You. I did hear it's better to be pissed off than pissed on, and in this case, this woman was both. So I feel <sighs> terrible for her. Double whammy. Double whammy. So yes, that is that. And also, if you uh, want to make friends, like smile, you know, give them blowjobs and probably. stimulate pop rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And just to set the record straight, because yeah. I don't want people thinking that that is like a, a code word for something, she would put Pop Rocks in her mouth and then she would perform <laughs> It wasn't that. a metaphor. It was not a metaphor. It was, it was, that was what she used. 
during, during. the technique. Are yes. you serious? I am. Well, I'm as I serious if that as feels good. I'm as serious as a 16 year old who received this information third or third fourth hand. hand would be. That's about as serious. That as I seems am. dangerous to your pee hole. Oh my god! I mean, well, I would not take that risk, Sarah. But didn't we already talk about this with Adam and spicy foods? <laughs> I think, I think yeah, I think we're good. We did, but Pop Rocks is not just that I don't it's know. Right. it's not spicy, right? The <laughs> popping effect, ooh, <laughs> right? It's I a don't chemical know. reaction. The ke- right? I mean, it's okay on your tongue, so I would imagine, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't but have a penis. I wouldn't want one in my pee hole. That's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Definitely not. That's pretty much uh, uh, out only, exit only. Not pretty much. It's fact. <laughs> fact. We learned a lot. I'm dying. We learned a and lot. And then we learned about uh, very gay painters. Oh, and yes. Very gay painters. Plant the queen. Sierra KWN. Club. Yes. Join the Sierra Club if you like to be outside and hiking and want to learn some facts. And that tour guides are the number one peddlers of prepackaged jokes. <laughs> Susie's <laughs> mad about it. Sarah grew I'm up mad with about it. <laughs> we learned a lot, everybody. Mm-hmm. So don't forget to leave us a five-star review and subscribe. All right, bye. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Hi, this is Ken Levine. At one time, I wrote for MASH, Cheers, Frasier, and The Simpsons, and now I host my own podcast, Hollywood and Levine. It's an irreverent and occasionally informative look at show business. Come for the comedy, stay for the -the behind-the-scenes stories, interviews, and tips on just how to navigate the entertainment industry. You can find a link in the show notes or simply search for Hollywood and Levine on your podcast app.